There's one thing I trust more than my memory, and that's my notes. There's just so much information and new topics to take in every day, and my notes have been my number one tool to make sense of it all. In this video, I'm going to share my process for taking notes on technical things, how I do it for learning, for sharing, and even for teaching. And I'll also show you the exact tools I use and some practical tips I fall back on when life's too busy to sit down and take proper notes. For me, taking notes isn't about building a second brain or some fancy productivity system. For me, notes are just the more effective way I've found to guide my monkey mind when I'm trying to learn something complex. The thing about technical knowledge is that it's dense and it's layered. One concept is never about one thing, but it's a web of related things. For example, you learn about web APIs and suddenly you realize you're learning about web servers, authentication, red limits, different kinds of requests, JSON formatting, error handling, and so on. So if you don't capture and consciously process the information, for example, by writing it down, it will quickly tangle into a mess. And before long, you forget everything. So it's absolutely normal if you spend hours reading a book or watching a tutorial only to forget literally everything the next week. That's why I don't buy into the idea of learning things the easy way. Even now, when you can just ask ChatGPT to explain anything or download someone else's notes with just one click, I believe a bit of friction is necessary to make learning stick. Another trap we often fall into is consuming too much. We binge books, podcasts, articles, videos, far more than we can absorb. I used to scroll LinkedIn, save a dozen interesting posts or articles, and then never touch them again. That's just purely information hoarding. I had nothing to show for the knowledge I supposedly gained. In fact, I barely remembered any of it, and it only increased my anxiety. But when I put in the effort to capture the knowledge in my own way, I feel much more confident and at peace. There's a quote I love from David Allen, your mind is for having ideas, not keeping them. Notes don't usually pay off right away. They often become useful later when you are building a project or preparing a presentation or teaching someone else on that topic. So here's my note taking process in general. It starts with capture quickly, organize later, connect ideas, use, and then reuse. While I first learn about something, I don't worry about making notes pretty. I just dump everything I come across into Notion with some bullet points and rough explanations in plain English, some screenshots, code snippets, links, and so on. For example, if I'm learning about knowledge graphs, my notes in Notion will look raw and a bit chaotic like this at this stage. And that's okay. The goal is just to capture things before they slip away. Talking about Notion, who's kindly sponsored part of this video, I've been using Notion for years and I just generally love it. Notion's recently launched Notion Agent, which is like a teammate that can actually do things for you, execute multi-step workflows, and automate repetitive tasks. Agents can now create and edit Notion pages, as well as create and customize databases, query and enrich them. Notion agent can connect with various tools like Gmail, Slack, and Google Drive. For example, you can ask Notion agent to add explanation on APIs with Python code example and export to a PDF, or write a report on my database and draft a status update email to my team. Then you can simply review the output and approve the changes. So if you if you're curious to try out this new feature, check out the link in the description below. And thanks again to Notion for sponsoring part of this video. Okay, back to my note-taking process. Once I've got a pile of notes, then I'll go back and clean them up. I'll look for the main ideas that help with the high over understanding and cut out all the fluff. I remove everything that doesn't matter. To make the note really useful for review later, you want it to have high signal to noise ratio. You want to make it packed with useful information as possible, but nothing more. I often structure notes into sections. For example, concepts with all the uh, main concepts and the sub-concepts, and then adding some details with examples. Examples are super useful for making things click, and sometimes I also add code if it's helpful. And then I'll add a section for 
of gotchas, the common misunderstandings or the mistakes I ran into. And finally, I'll list some useful resources for later. Actually, you can use any structure that makes sense to you really. So once you have organized the notes into a reasonable structure, it's time to make connections with what you already know. For example, in Notion, you can link one page to another so you can hop between related topics. Now, bullet point style notes like this are fine, but sometimes I find it a bit more intuitive and easier for my brain if I turn my notes into a mind map. I love mind maps because it's a great way to get a bird eye view on a topic. You can zoom out to get a bigger picture and zoom in for more details. For example, this is a Python learning mind map that I created to help people understand the different concepts in Python and how they're related to one another. Similarly, this is another mind map about the main subfields of machine learning. Many of you asked me which tool I use to create these mind maps. I'll talk about the tools I use later in this video. Occasionally, I also turn the notes into visual notes. This is great for diagrams and freestyle writing. These visual notes basically combine handwritten text with headings and color coding to draw attention to different parts of the notes incorporating images and symbols, and you can use any layout you want to organize the information. For example, this is the note I took when learning about computer architecture, and here's the note on one of the books I read. You can draw these notes on an iPad or just with the good old pen and paper. I find this super fun to do because it engages all senses, you hear or read information, and instead of capturing things verbatim, you try to translate them into texts and drawings with your hands. It forces you to focus on what you're doing, and I promise it's impossible to get distracted in this process. For me, it almost feels meditative. In the next step, we actually use a note. Notes only matter if you actually use them. So when I'm working on a project or learning something similar, I always go back to see what I have written down, what I already know, and what are still missing. So this is kind of like a primer for the new thing that I'm working on. Sometimes I find some missing gaps in my notes and so I'll go back and add the new things or I might notice some new interesting connections, so I'll add them as well. Okay, the final step in this process is reuse. Very often I'll repurpose my notes into teaching materials, for example, blog posts or even YouTube videos. Sometimes I just share them with my colleagues or someone else. Sharing things forces me to polish things up and make them more useful for other people too. When it comes to note-taking tools, my main hub is Notion. In Notion, you can create a rich document with various layouts, add different block types like headings, toggle lists, callouts, code blocks, checklists, and even a database, or even something like a Kanban board if you want to track progress in a project. So it's super versatile. However, if I need something super quick, like I'm in a rush, I'll just open app notes to write some notes and then transfer it to Notion later when I have time. For creating mind maps, I use Orgpad. It's hands down the best mind mapping tool I've ever come across. They didn't sponsor me to say great things about them, but I just generally love the tool and I'd highly recommend it if you are looking for a web-based mind mapping tool. And if I have time and I'm in the mood to create something more unique, like a visual note, I use Procreate app on my iPad. But honestly, you can use any other drawing software you have or just pen and paper. At the end of the day, the tool doesn't matter nearly as much as being consistent. For me, even some bad notes with just simple bullet points are still better than nothing. Now that I'm in my 30s, way past my student days, I just don't have hours to sit around and make pretty notes anymore. So sometimes I want to go like traveling or listening to a podcast when I'm walking to the grocery store. If I hear something I want to capture, I tell Siri to start a voice memo and just record whatever I have in mind. And then later I'll take the transcript of my voice memo and clean it up with ChatGPT. And also, nowadays, you can use powerful AI tools like Google Notebook LM to actually generate an audio podcast from the material you upload. It's a cool way to get a high-level overview when you're too busy to sit down and take notes yourself. You can just listen on the go and then later decide what's worth capturing in your own system. 
So that's my note-taking system in a nutshell. It's simple, but it works, and it saved me so many hours of re-googling the same thing. I'm curious, what's your note-taking process, and which tools do you use? Drop it in the comments below, and I'd love to steal some of your ideas. And if you found this useful, hit like, subscribe, and maybe take some notes on this video. Thank you for watching. Bye.